Hello, sophomore parents. Welcome to Sophomore Parent Night. We're excited that we're able to record our audio for you so that you can get the information from us. Usually we meet in person in the auditorium and present this information. Unfortunately, with COVID this year, that's not going to be a possibility. But again, we're thankful that we can still have this be an option for us. So we're going to go through information this evening that is helpful for you as a sophomore parent. Some of the information might be new. Some of it might be information that we've covered in the past or that you know because you have an older student. But we wanted to make sure everybody was on the same page. Uh, the staff members that we have in the counseling office, there are some new and some returners. So I'm Laura Keither. I'm one of the high school counselors and I have students with the last name A through G and T. We have Mrs. Shepperman who has students last name H through O. Mrs. Thompson has students P through Z except for T. We have some new staff members. Erin Fisher um, is a school counselor and she is in charge of our school to career program. Mrs. Van Aston is our new admin assistant and then we also have Mrs. Petrie, our registrar, and Mrs. Bennett, our school psychologist. If you need to reach us or um, have your students reach us, um, you can call the counseling office at 779-7934 and go get a hold of us that way. You can also have your student reach out to us via Canvas and all of our students are in our Canvas classes. So my students are in Keither's class, uh, students last name A through G and T. So if they're wondering what those classes are in Canvas, there is no curriculum, there's no homework, it's just our way to be able to reach out to students. New for sophomores this year is that we will be completing one-on-one -on -one sophomore conferences with students and parents. We're really excited for this change. Historically, we have always completed conferencing with juniors and junior parents, but we realized that the information that we were presenting was maybe more helpful to have earlier on so that students and parents could plan more appropriately for their junior and senior year and then life beyond high school. So some things that we'll cover during sophomore conferencing are four-year planning, uh, post-graduation planning, so what do students want to do, or, and if they don't know what they want to do, how can we help them explore options for after high school, and then making sure that classes that they take in high school are aligning with what they want to do beyond graduation. So we think that that's really helpful. We're also going to talk about scholarships, service learning. We're going to talk to kids about college, military, technical college, apprenticeships, you know, everything that has to do with making the, the most out of high school time. These will be virtual, so the, the conferences will be scheduled hopefully during a student's free period. And students can come to the counseling office and utilize our conference room for socially distancing. We will then log into Microsoft Teams and you will get a calendar invite for Microsoft Teams as well. So you can log in from home, from work, um, anywhere where you can use a laptop or your phone, whatever works best for you. So we're asking that if this is something that you choose to attend for your student, that you call the counseling office to schedule that and get priority for days and times that work for you. Um, if it doesn't work for you to attend your students conference, we will still schedule that with them then individually and make sure that they still get the information and then can carry that home and pass it on to you. So again, sophomore conferencing new this year, we're going to do that one on one with students and parents virtually and please call 779-7934 to schedule that. Something that we think is helpful for all students to begin to utilize, especially sophomores, is Zello. Zello is a program that we use for planning for post-graduation, um, career planning, college planning, anything that is helpful for students to understand and explore what they want to do. So within Zello, students can take assessments as far as interest inventories and skills that they might have and will give them ideas for careers that might be a good match for them. It will then tell them training that they need to have that career, schools or um, additional programs that will help get that for them. And then also talks to them about things that they can do to help improve their skills in areas that they might need to. So uh, students can log into Zello by going to xello.com. Their username is always capital letters H-O-R-T dash their student ID number. And their password is something that they would have picked already. So if they have a password that they use for everything, ask them to check that first. If they're still striking out on being able to log in for some reason, please let us know and we can help troubleshoot that for them. Sometimes it's just resetting the password on our end so that they can log in again and change their password. And again, this is something that you can sit down at home and do with them. You can utilize it if it's something that you think would be helpful for you, but really a great resource and we can give you a little tutorial of that whenever we do sophomore conferencing. 
Being involved in some sort of club or activity is something that we hope for all of our students to do. Did you know that Hortonville High School has over 50 clubs and activities to get involved in? So if your student has something that they're interested in, check out the link here to see if it is a club or activity that already exists. If not, have them come and talk to us and we can help create that club. It's really important for kids to get involved in clubs or activities because it helps build a resume for them, helps them build time management skills, and ultimately helps them feel connected to their school and to their community. Hi, this is Miss Van Caster. I am the Youth Service Learning Coordinator here at Hortonville High School. Um, at Hortonville High School, in order to graduate, you do need 36 Youth Service Learning Hours. These are volunteer hours that you get throughout your high school career, something that you can start the day after your eighth grade graduation, and then all throughout high school. There are a few things to keep in mind when you are doing these service hours that they really are community based. They're things that you can do in your community or for a specific organization. They are outside of your normal family or maybe family commitments that you might already have. When you do have these hours, you do have to log them in a website called www.getinvolved.org. I do have that website listed here on the left hand side. Um, once you register and create an account on there, then you can start recording your hours. When you do record your hours, you will also need your supervisor's email address and phone number. And when you put that in to get involved and submit your record, your supervisor will need to approve them for you. There is more information as well. Um, on the Hortonville High School Youth Service Learning website. On there is a description of youth service learning, different volunteer opportunities or things that you can do within the community to, to give you a better idea of what is out there um, and what you can do, um, as well as information on how to create an account on Get Involved and create that record as well. Some other things to keep in mind is that if you are someone that plans on participating in youth apprenticeship, work release, band study hall, or commons eligibility throughout your high school career, you also do need your youth service learning hours in Get Involved and Approved. Um, there are certain requirements each year throughout your high school that you need to meet in order to participate in those. You can look at your student planner on page 10 to kind of give you more information on that eligibility and what that looks like for each grade level. Um, also, if you do want to get a merit card uh, in your um, junior or senior year, you do need all 36 service hours completed and improved and get involved uh, prior to receiving that merit card. If you do have any questions, feel free to reach out to me um, in my classroom phone call or my email address at taravancaster.hasd.org.
If your student is in need of a work permit for a job, they can get that in Student Services. Student Services is located right in the Commons just past the main office doors. They can get them between 8 and 2, and materials that they need to bring in order to get their work permit is a driver's license or birth certificate, a letter from the employer, a note from you giving them permission to get the work permit because they'll be working, uh, their social security card, either the original or a copied, and then $10 cash or check made out to Hortonville High School. Hello, this is Dawn Grenzer, the Youth Apprenticeship Coordinator for Hortonville High School. Youth Apprenticeship Program is a one or a two year elective program that combines classroom instruction and on the job training for students that have a specific career path that they are interested in. The program is for juniors and seniors. Youth Apprenticeship offers uh, programs within 11 different industry and 55 different career paths. Not every uh, career path has a Youth Apprenticeship program. You can see uh, many of the career clusters are recognized from business administration, agriculture, uh, information systems, engineering, manufacturing, technology, health science, human services. The benefits of a youth apprenticeship program allow students to learn skills not taught in the class. So they are on the job training, develop a network of contacts, they earn high school credits, uh, some may even earn college credit, and some students may also have the opportunity to be duly enrolled in a youth apprenticeship program as well as a registered apprenticeship uh, pursuing their journeyman. Youth apprenticeship allows students to build their resume. And they can list experience and employment, uh, strengthen skills and demand by employers. So as they are entering the workforce, our employers, our mentors that work with our students are helping them uh, to be ready for the industry after graduation. Reduce future education expenses. Some of our students are able to um, participate in an education reimbursement program. Some of our students graduate and are hired directly to continue working with their employer, um, while others are saving money that they, were, that they got paid as they participated in their YA placement. Students are released or can be released from school uh, to learn in the industry. So they are earning credits, so that would be their class. Uh, some of our students report to work in the morning and then come to school in the afternoon, or maybe they'll come to school in the morning and then leave in the afternoon and head to their uh, employer. The program definitely is fun. It allows students to get a jump start on a career path, and students also, it's required by the state that they get paid for their placement. What makes a great candidate? Students with an identified career goal. So students have to have an idea of a career path that they are interested in. Uh, they need to be ready and willing to learn, have a positive attitude, great attendance record, and on track for graduation. Those are two things that go hand in hand. We need to make sure that our students are in good standing. And these are two things that our employers uh, value very much, not only in a student, but also as their um, employee. All students are required to have reliable transportation. It is the student's responsibility uh, to get themselves to and from work. If you are interested in learning more about the Youth Apprenticeship Program, please visit our website. Our, all students do have to apply to participate in the YA program. Um, there is a link to our application. It includes student information, uh, as well as a couple short essay questions to share with employers of why you would like to participate in this program. It does require two letters of recommendation from a, a teacher within the area that you are pursuing uh, youth apprenticeship in, as well as a teacher, uh, excuse me, a school counselor recommendation. If you would like to learn more, if you have questions, please feel free to email me or call me. I am happy to schedule a conversation, answer any questions uh, to help you pursue or learn more to see if youth apprenticeship is a fit for you. 
We have a deadline coming up for our Start College Now and Early College Credit Program applications. That deadline is coming up on October 1st. So if you're listening to this and you're thinking that's something your child might want to do, please have them stop in and we can make an appointment with them to go over all the requirements for this. But Start College Now and Early College Credit Program, or ECCP, are formerly what we used to call youth options. So if you have older students and they took advantage of the youth options program, this would be the same thing, except Except it's now Start College Now and ECCP. Start College Now is through Fox Valley Tech and ECCP is through the UW system. Both of these programs allow students to apply to take classes through their programs and through their campuses and get high school and college credit. Hortonville High School will take a look at the applications, uh, will approve students for classes that align with their career pathways or their post-graduation plans, and then will pay for books and tuition. Counselors will then work with students to adjust their schedule here to allow for release time for them to be able to work on the courses that they need and meet the requirements and also meet Hortonville High School graduation requirements. As I mentioned, there is an application for ECCP and Start College Now. The applications need to be completed each semester. So if a student would like to complete the application to participate for their fall semester, the deadline for that is March 1st. The one we have coming up here is October 1st for students to be able to be eligible for their spring semester. The student is responsible for completing the application, for getting signatures, and for turning it in on time. Also keep in mind that uh, the college classes that students take can transfer to other universities. So if your student isn't necessarily interested in going to Fox Valley Tech, but it has some classes that might be of interest to them in their post-graduation planning, sometimes those credits will transfer to other universities or transfer to other technical colleges. Same would be for the UW system. We have some links here for you to check to see if the classes that you take through ECCP or Start College Now will go to the colleges or technical colleges that you're looking for after graduation. Again, if your students have any questions about this, if they want more information, if you would like more information, please give us a call or have your students stop in. It's a really great program and it is great for students to enrich their day if they've continued on a pathway or if there's classes that we don't offer here that they're really interested in. Um, and again, remind them them that they are enrolling as a college student so that will start a college transcript for them but a great opportunity for them to start transitioning to college if that's their plan. If you'd like to know what courses are available for your students to take through Start College Now or the ECCP program here are the links to click on. Some upcoming testing information for sophomore year is the ACT Universal Screener will be held on September 23rd, the ACT Aspire will be held on April 14th and 15th, junior year your student has a variety of tests that they can choose to take, they can take the PSAT which will be held in October, the ASVAB which will be held in February, the ACT, which is mandatory for all juniors to take, will be held in March. And then if your student is enrolled in an AP class, they can choose to take their AP exams, which are in May. If you need any information or have any questions about testing, please contact your student's school counselor with your questions. Testing resources are available for your student. Students who are interested in the PSAT and AP exams should go to collegeboard.com. There's tons of information about the test, study guides, and tips and tricks for the test as well on that website. The ACT, students can go to act.org where they will find information about the test, again, tips and tricks. And then the ACT Academy is a wonderful resource that has study guide materials, practice tests, and anything your student will need to know about the ACT. As we prepare for sophomore conferencing, we wanted to give you an example of some typical junior courses. Your student for their junior year will need one credit of English. This can either be English 11 or AP English in Composition slash CAP English 101, one credit of Math, one credit of Science, one credit of Social Studies, U.S. History or AP U.S. History, a half a credit of Physical Education, a half a credit of Personal Finance, and two to three credits of electives. 
This slide is our transcripted courses available here at the high school. So during your sophomore conferencing, we'll definitely go over all this in detail, but we just wanted to give you a listing of all the classes here at our high school currently that are listed as transcripted credit. What this means is that your student can earn high school credit along with college credit, either from a four-year institution or Fox Valley Technical College um, that will go towards their post-secondary goals. So again, we offer a wide variety of transcripted credits on top of AP, CLEP, and Project Lead the Way classes as well. It's never too early to start planning for junior year. So some upcoming notes would be that we offer a junior parent night in February. This parent night is pretty cool because we have representatives from the military, youth apprenticeship, technical college, public and private four-year universities that will provide input on their designated institution. This year, we're also doing group junior conferences. Um, so the counselors will meet with the students to discuss high school completion, post-secondary plans, and provide students with resources to assist them with their post-secondary interests, as well as give them um, information on scholarships, admissions requirements, and all that great stuff. And then thirdly, the school-wide ACT testing is again in March, just another reminder that that is a mandated test um, for all juniors to take. Following their sophomore year, we'll be doing group junior conferences with your student. During this conference, we'll focus on graduation requirements and review the transcript. We'll talk about admission and application processes. We'll talk about scholarships and financial aid the ACT and other testing that may be applicable to your student. We'll talk about ECCP and Start College Now, dual credit courses, youth apprenticeship, and college and career resources for your student based off of their career pathways. Campus tours. We highly encourage our sophomores to start getting on campuses early. So if your student is bound to go to college, whether that's a four-year institution or a technical college, we would encourage them to get on that campus and do a tour. Um, many students choose their colleges based on walking onto that campus. So although this may look a little different this year with COVID, we still encourage you to reach out um, and see if they are doing in-person campus tours or they do have really awesome virtual tours now as well. So if your student is interested in any of the four-year institutions, you can click the UW system campus tours. Um, that is hyperlinked for you as well as the college, private college campus tours. And then um, with Fox Valley being close, we have that one uploaded as well. Summer school is a great opportunity for students to take advantage of getting ahead. So here at Hortonville, students can get ahead by taking personal finance or their PE in the summertime. Otherwise, the consortium classes, which is throughout the Fox Valley, offers a variety of classes that maybe students just take to see where their interest lies or um, if they do have an interest in taking extra classes in those subjects as well. Otherwise, we really um, advise our students to do some pre-college programs um, and then check the college websites for course offerings, dates, and avail availabilities for these pre-college programs. We also encourage you to check out our HHS Counseling Department page. Um, there's tons of resources on there from college and career planning to scholarships to financial aid to military if your student's interested in the military to testing and to camp campus visits and more. So um, if you want a quick, easy way, you can click, click here um, and it will bring you directly to our counseling department. Thanks for attending virtually for our sophomore parent night. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to reach out to your student school counselor, as we'll be more than happy to answer any questions you may have. We also are looking forward to seeing you virtually for your students' sophomore conferences.